The Big 12 race is tightened after last week's results, and the Texas Longhorns are smack dab right in the middle of it. Uh, we got Steve Helwick on the line, University of Texas grad, also uh, writes for SB Nation's Hustle Belt and Underdog Dynasty. Texas taking on West Virginia in Austin this weekend. Huge game in the Big 12. Steve, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's November now. Still still feeling a little bit of the aftershock from last week's college football, especially that Texas-Oklahoma State thriller. It was a thriller. Uh, the Cowboys, if you look at the box score, rolled up almost 600 yards of total offense. Texas under 300. But, of course, the four huge turnovers uh, and the Texas defense and uh, the special teams with a ton of hidden yards, of course, with the big kickoff return. Your thoughts about the Longhorns' efforts in Stillwater? Tom Herman had said, hey, we're going to need an A game. And it wasn't pretty. It wasn't dominant. But it was effective. It was not an A game by any means. You look at that box score, and it looks like Oklahoma State blew them out. Bill Connolly from ESPN, somebody who's one of the best statisticians with college football, he said that Texas had a post-game win probability of 3%, the lowest of all teams that have won this year, and that's how lopsided the game was. But Texas had the key stat of winning the turnover battle 4-0, to and a lot of those forced short fields for the Longhorns, and they were able to capitalize off those turnovers with 21 points. And that was just a huge swing. Late in the game, Oklahoma State's driving uh, with a chance to go up two scores. Then L.D. Brown fumbles. And on the other side, there's a roughing the punter penalty, which is basically another turnover for Oklahoma State. Texas converts two fourth downs. They were 2 of 15 on third downs. Couldn't get off the field. They had nine punt. They couldn't stay on the field. They had nine punts. But they get two key fourth downs on that drive late in the fourth quarter. Go up 34-31. And then... In overtime, they put the pressure on Spencer Sanders, and they forced a sack. Joseph Asai was the player of the game, had a fumble recovery, three sacks, six tackles for loss. I've been raving about him on your channel ever since that Sugar Bowl game against Georgia. This is NFL talent right here. Joseph Asai is a masterful defensive player, and Sam Ellinger probably had the worst game he's seen since his freshman year, completed half his passes. He had negative rushing yards. Usually he's dominant in QB power scenarios and is a good runner by the goal line. Negative rushing yards because he took five sacks, couldn't get anything going. Oklahoma State perfectly game plan for him. But what Ellinger did was when Texas had a chance due to its defense and its special teams, he delivered those throws on those fourth downs, got three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, and was able to recollect and win that game for Texas, which was their biggest win of the 2020 season and a huge win in the Herman era. And once again, unranked Tom Herman against the top 10 team, Herman comes out on top. And Steve, as you outlined for us last week, uh, Joseph, Joseph Asai, not even 100%, and uh, he still was just a terror in that game and made so many huge plays. Uh, Sam Ellinger, as you mentioned, not a factor in the run game for one of the first times ever. Joshua Moore was not seen or heard from until the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Uh, Oklahoma State was everything that I expected them to be. Uh, I saw them play most of the game against Tulsa, saw a little bit against Iowa State. Tylen Wallace is one of the top five wide receivers in America. Spencer Sanders is dynamic when he's not making a few mistakes. Uh, the Texas defense did an amazing job against Chuba Hubbard. He was only around 2.8 yards per carry. And uh, the Oklahoma State defense is all over the place, breaking up passes, rushing to the football, swarming, tackling, good open field tacklers. Again, they only gave up about 280 yards of total offense. So Oklahoma State uh, with one loss. Kansas State loses on the same weekend, one loss. Sets us up for those two with one loss and then a bevy of teams with two losses uh, in the conference, and Iowa State, obviously, with uh, just the one loss as well. So now we got West Virginia coming to Texas, and the Mountaineers coming off a huge win against Kansas State in dominant fashion with uh, Seth Deggy uh, totaling over 300 yards passing. It's going to set up another good Big 12 matchup. I personally think West Virginia should be ranked right now, and it should be a matchup between ranked Big 12 teams. And Texas faced a great Oklahoma State defense last week. Don't look at the final score. The 34 points is not indicative of how good Oklahoma State played defense in that game. And this week, they're going up against a similarly powerful defense in West Virginia. Of all teams that have played more than two games this year, there's no team in the country that allows fewer passing yards per game than the Mountaineers. 
Neil Brown has done a great job rebuilding that team from when Holgerson had that senior heavy team with David Sills and Will Greer in 2018. Missed the bowl game last year with five and seven, and West Virginia is back up this year, four and two. They're, they had a loss to Oklahoma State. That was a low-scoring defensive battle. And then they had a questionable loss to Texas Tech uh, two weeks ago, but it seems like the Mountaineers figure things out, especially on the defensive end. They were forcing Kansas State into a lot of bad throws, interceptions earlier in that game, and the offense was able to take charge with Letty Brown leading the way from the rushing attack. So West Virginia has a solid balanced team. And I think they're kind of similar, not as good as Oklahoma state, but they're kind of a similar style team to Oklahoma state with what we'll see against Texas. The only difference is Spencer Sanders can provide some mobility out of the passing attack while Jared Deggie doesn't have as good of a footwork, but he has a heck of an arm throws for almost 300 yards each outing. And I think Texas is going to be challenged a little bit by West Virginia's offense this week. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the big games across the nation, including in the Big 12. Oklahoma State uh, goes down to Texas. The Longhorns stay uh, in the race for a conference championship, a huge game against West Virginia, who, in fact, also maintained their position in the race and stayed in it with a big win against Kansas State, knocking down the Wildcats. Uh, in the process. So it just bunched up the entire race. Uh, before we get to the conference outlook, uh, Letty Brown, 102 yards balances out that offense, as you just mentioned, uh, as uh, West Virginia had nine passes defense against Kansas State in that game, giving up just 10 points. Uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton with a nice day, 104 yards receiving, including a 58 yarder. And uh, West Virginia, I've got them ranked in my top 25, so I'm certainly giving them respect. Uh, again, a curious loss against the Texas Tech team that um, is certainly on the downslide at this point of the season. So we set everyone up, uh, Steve, in regards to this matchup uh, or the uh, conference as a whole. Uh, how do you uh, handicap it the rest of the way in terms of the big games? Who do you think's hot? Who do you think's maybe just a pretender? I think Oklahoma State is for real, and I just think if they limit, if they commit one fewer turnover, they don't rough the punter, they get one more stop on fourth down. We're talking about an Oklahoma State team that bent but didn't break and won a close game against Texas. And I think Oklahoma State is still the best team in this conference. They have, although Chuba Hubbard didn't have a great game against Texas, he's a fantastic running back. Tylen Wallace is the premier receiver in the conference. Have a decent offensive line. Good. Good quarterback in Spencer Sanders that can – he makes mistakes, but sometimes he'll get hot and do really well in the running and passing attack, and he has a good set of targets with Wolf and Stoner also out there. And then Oklahoma State has a top defense. So I think they are a legitimate candidate still, even with that one loss. And I'm, I'm so interested in Bedlam this year. This is going to be the best Bedlam matchup we've had since 2017 when game day was there and it was that high-scoring affair in Stillwater. But Bedlam's going to be a really good one this year. And I think we could be shaping up for a Bedlam Big 12 championship since Oklahoma has seemed to turn this around. Past couple weeks against TCU and Texas Tech, we've seen a whole different breed of Oklahoma, whole different confidence to Spencer Rattler, and the Sooners seem to have their groove on right now. But then I say that the third team is Texas, and they can definitely make, make that contention because – you look at Texas's four of their five Big 12 games, excluding Baylor, have been down to the wire. Either team could have won. Their loss to TCU, Keontae Ingram fumbles on the one-yard line in the final minutes. Texas runs that ball in. They probably beat the Horn Frogs. Oklahoma, that game goes to four overtimes. I mean, when it's a four-overtime game, either team could have won. What if Texas went for two after second overtime and made it with how hot their offense was, which is something I thought they should have done at the time. So if you look at both of Texas's losses, they were easily winnable games. But then you look at their wins against Texas Tech to Oklahoma State. They probably should have lost both of those games, being down 15 points in the final three minutes to Texas Tech, and then just being outplayed in every facet of the game except for turnovers against Oklahoma State. So Texas really knows how to make things interesting, but they're going to be in every single game. There's not a single team that they can't beat in the Big 12. And – I think every game with them, they have, it seems like at least a 50% chance to win. So I think a lot of, if Oklahoma State can win Bedlam and give Oklahoma that other loss, what's going to prevent Texas from winning out in the Big 12 and 
taking that spot from Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game. So I think right now it's going to be a three-team race for the Big 12 title game. There's good teams like Iowa State, Kansas State, and West Virginia. Iowa State has already played Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, but they still have Texas left, and they still have another game they might lose against Kansas State or West Virginia. So I don't know how much I trust Iowa State after how bad they got beat by Louisiana on week on their opening game, but Iowa State, I say, is the only other team I could maybe see crashing the party, but right now for me it's a three-team race.